Hey everyone and welcome back to Hoffman Engineering. Today we are doing a deep dive into deep engraving these. These are slate coaster blanks. If you've seen any of my laser engraver reviews, you'll know that I love slate coasters and engrave them on almost every laser I've tested. But all of my tests have been with surface level engravings. Many laser types, including diode and fiber lasers, can create some beautiful high contrast markings on the surface of the slate. But I recently experimented with deep engraving brass coins with a fiber laser, and I got these beautiful results. You can check out that video for more information. But that got me thinking, if I can deep engrave brass, what would deep engraved slate coasters look like? Will the stone engrave cleanly, or will it end up in a pile of dust? Let's find out. For these experiments, I'll be using the Commarker B6 60 watt MOPA fiber laser. Commarker did provide this laser for me to review, but they aren't paying me for that review or for this video. I simply still have access to this B6, so it'll be the perfect tool to experiment with. First up, we'll need to purchase the slate coaster blanks. Thankfully, they seem to be very popular and are readily available from a a variety of different suppliers. I'll have affiliate links to all of these tools and materials in the video description if you are interested. I picked up a bunch of square coasters, but you can find slate blanks in many different shapes. If you purchased slate coasters, then most of the time they'll arrive with rubber or felt feet already attached. Slate blanks tend to come without feet, but you can purchase them separately and add them on very easily. Looking at my test slate coasters, they vary in height from 3 to 7 millimeters thick. They measure 100 millimeters by 100 millimeters. To account for the border, that leaves us 88 to 90 millimeters of engravable area in the center. The slate is pretty flat to begin with, making it an excellent option for laser engraving. They feel nice in the hand and they have a solid weight to them. It feels premium, which is what makes them such a nice gift. So now that we have the slate coasters, let's set up the laser for them. As I mentioned, I'm going to be using the Commarker B6. This is a 60 watt MOPA fiber laser. Fiber lasers are great for cutting and engraving almost all metals and plastics, but they also work surprisingly well on darker stone. You can see my full review for all the details about the Commarker B6 if you are interested. Since the height of the coaster varies, we'll need to make sure that we focus the laser before each engraving. This is easily done on the B6, because it has autofocus built in. Simply position the slate under the autofocus dot and press auto. It'll automatically move the laser head up or down to the perfect focal distance. Once it stops, we are focused and ready to go. You might be wondering about the wood underneath. Fiber lasers do not work on wood, so I like to use wood as a spoil board underneath. I'm not sure how quickly I might engrave through the slate, so I'd rather the laser hit the wood then continue to mark up the metal work surface underneath, but the wood is not necessary. As with every new material, we need to figure out the best settings to use. Lightburn is my preferred software for controlling any type of laser, and Lightburn has an excellent test pattern generator just for this purpose. We are looking for deep engraving performance, so my first pass is going to be a wide array of settings. I'm going to be testing frequently frequencies between 80 and 2000 kHz and Q pulse settings between 50 and 300 nanoseconds. Since we want to engrave deep, I'll keep the power at 95% and run it at 2000 millimeters per second speeds, 0.05 millimeter intervals and do 10 passes for each combination. And this is extremely interesting. The higher frequencies pump out so much heat into the stone that it becomes molten. You can see the stone remaining red hot as the laser moves on to the next cell. And this would be a good time to mention that I'm using a fume extractor to help keep stone dust and fumes down. But as you'll soon see, this fume extractor wasn't enough for the amount of stone dust we are about to make. The first test finished and we can see that all frequencies above 240 kHz just results in a molten, raised bubbly surface finish. There's almost no material removed, it just melted and became porous. However, the 80 kHz frequency is promising. Material has been cleanly removed, and the Q-Pulse doesn't seem to make too much of a difference here. So with that first test done, we can refine our settings. I was happy with the power, speeds, and line interval, so I'll keep those the same. And I'll focus the frequency around that 80 kHz mark, so let's test between 10 and 150 kHz. And keep the Q-Pulse between 10 and 300 nanoseconds. And then I'll run just 5 passes to keep the test somewhat short. So with this test running, we can see much more material is being removed. As we get to the left side, where the Q-Pulse duration becomes shorter, we can see it removing less material, eventually turning into a nice high contrast white around 10 nanoseconds. After a few more minutes, the second test is done. The results are that frequencies less than 30 kilohertz, or Q-Pulse durations less than about 25 nanoseconds results in a surface level marking. But slightly higher frequencies or Q-Pulse durations results in a very good material removal on these slate coasters. It looks like the sweet spot for me is 130 kilohertz and a Q-Pulse duration of 250 nanoseconds. We've figured out this piece of the puzzle. Now we just need a design to engrave. Lightburn has a feature called 3D Slice. It uses multiple passes to engrave a design one layer at a time, enabling a 2.5D effect. 
Using a specially designed grayscale image, lighter pixels were engraved with fewer passes than darker pixels, resulting in a deeper engraving in darker areas of the image. You need to find these specially designed height map images. I like to use 3dgrayscale.com. I have no affiliation with them, I just like the quality of the images on there. Let me know if you have places where you like to get these height maps, or tips and tricks for creating your own in the comments. I'd love to learn more. These are the two designs I'm going to try. This dinosaur fossil would be fitting to uncover in the stone, and I like the detail of the masts and rigging of this ship. So first up, the dino. Let's import the image into Lightburn. If you need to crop an image, you can draw a shape on the same layer, make sure that the layer is in line mode, and then select both the shape and the image and press use as mask. With the image ready, we can make sure that the image layer is set to be in 3D slice mode. And here are the settings I'm going to use. 2000 millimeters per second speeds, 90% max power, 130 kilohertz frequency, 250 nanosecond Q pulse, and a line interval of 0.05 millimeters. My five test passes got me about 0.2 millimeters deep, so 50 passes should get me 10 times that, or about 2 millimeters deep. I'll also have a low powered cleanup pass that runs every five layers. The cleanup is important for brass, so we can see if it's important for slates. I have it set at 30% power, 30 kilohertz frequency, and 50 nanosecond Q pulse durations every five layers. So now that we have our settings, let's start engraving. Immediately, we see that the 60 watts of the Commarker B6 MOPA eating through the slate. Dust clouds billow out from the surface, and my poor fume extractor is not powerful enough to contain all of this dust. Even with a fresh set of filters, I think it would still struggle. Overall, this 50 layer engraving takes about one and a half hours to engrave, and initial impressions are amazing. But first, let's clean up all this dust. A shop vac makes quick work of it. And here's the results. It looks incredible. The Commarker B6 was able to remove 2 millimeters of stone in that short period of time. I love the look of this fossil. The engraving was able to form even the tiniest of details, from the small lines on the bones to the cracks in the rocks. And when you tilt the light in just the right way, you can really see the true 3D effect of this engraving. I am impressed. Let's continue. Next up, the ship sailing on open waters. I like this design because of the empty sky. I'm curious to see how such a large flat engraved surface will turn out. As for the settings, I wanted to go a little deeper, so I raised the number of layers from 50 to 65. The rest of the settings are exactly the same. 2000 millimeters per second speeds, 90% max power, 130 kilohertz frequency, 250 nanosecond Q pulse, and a line interval of 0.05 millimeters. The cleanup pass is exactly Exactly the same at 30% power, 30 kilohertz frequency, and 50 nanosecond Q pulse every five layers. This engraving took one hour and 45 minutes to complete. And again, the sheer amount of dust is pretty crazy. I'll have to make sure that the B6 and my laptop get a nice cleaning after these experiments. And here are the final results. The fine details look just as good as with the dinosaur engraving. You can see all of the rigging on the sails, the tiny masts, and even the portholes on the side of the ship. And the perfectly flat sky turned out amazing. The B6 engraved 2.8 millimeters into the stone, and those extra layers let it really punch deeper into the stone. So in conclusion, slate is an amazing material to work with for fiber lasers. Almost all laser types can mark the surface, giving a nice high contrast white appearance. But if you want to engrave deep, then there is no match for a high-powered fiber laser. The Commarker B6 60-watt MOPA fiber laser did a great job at eating through the material. Heck, it even turned the stone to lava at higher frequencies. But when you have the settings dialed in just right, you can get some truly amazing results deep engraving slate. If you haven't tried it yourself, this should be the next project on your list. And if you want more information on the Commarker B6, you can check out my full review of it here. And you don't need a 60-watt fiber laser. Even a lower-powered 30 or 20-watt fiber laser would do the same job, just slightly slower. I'll have links to these lasers, as well as all the materials I use in the description below. So thank you for joining me on this experiment with Deep Engraving Slate. Do you have tips or tricks to share? Leave them in the comments below. And if there's something you'd like me to test, let me know those suggestions as well. So thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.